Hey, how's it going? Hamish from Phoenix Sound Recording Studio. We are still looking at Ate My Weight by the band Redwood. Again, if you've not checked out that song, feel free to go check it out here somewhere. Let's go with here. Uh, and if you're into it, go like them, follow them on social media and stuff. And if you're really into it, please go and pre-order the record. It was a lot of fun to make and I'm very proud of it, as are they. So, yeah, this is the first single from that album, uh, Ate My Weight, last episode. If you've not seen that, you can click the link somewhere on the screen now, and uh, that will take you to the episode where I discussed all the drums and bass. So this episode, we are looking at guitars, and hopefully we're then going to pass on through into some vocal and percussion and stuff uh, if it's not too long-winded. So... uh, I said in the last episode about um, something to do with the bass trying to be uh, kind of like the rhythm guitar, and I'm just going to reinforce that now. So Alex is the rhythm guitar player and the vocalist of this band, lead vocalist. Um, Connor also does a bunch of vocals as well, who plays bass. Um, but when we discussed it, we were kind of, for this whole record, the the plan was to kind of not necessarily reduce what Alex was playing, but kind of mix both the bass and Alex's parts as almost like one instrument um so we were going to try and bring the bass up to be a bit more like a guitar in terms of like four frontal um kind of where it stands in the mix and where it stands in the track and essentially Alex's guitar parts were again just going to kind of complement that so they're both doing kind of similar things in regards to note placement and chord placement and progressions and that kind of stuff um but Obviously, Alex is kind of filling out that kind of mid-range and and high-end more so, whereas Connor is obviously just trying to kind of contain that low end. But you'll notice um, by listening to the track that they do kind of meld together, and that that was kind of the intention. We we kind of wanted the bass to be, like, dominating um, and just kind of blend quite nicely with what Alex is playing. So um, Alex's setup is... Pretty pretty simple to be fair. Uh, I'm pretty sure all of at least this track was recorded on a telly that he's got, uh, like a standard setup telly, two single coils, um, and then ran through his pedal board. And he plays. I can't remember the model, but it's a brand called Hampstead that make uh, amps here in the UK. Uh, they're based in kind of North London, Hertfordshire. He's had it for a while. Um, it's a really nice amp it has some really cool little built-in stuff like a true trem and all that kind of stuff um takes pedals really well and it has a really beautiful clean um so yeah it was a that hampstead i think it's a like one by 12 combo in the live room um and then essentially we just brought him in here with his pedal board and we just sent everything through there and then mics wise um these are labeled badly my bad uh, it was a 57 and a 421, which is kind of my go-to um, for guitar amps. I kind of just find that like using those two mics blended is essentially the closest to what the amp sounds like in the room for me and the most real representation of that. Um, and then in some instances, I've also utilized the, um, the DI. I'm not entirely sure if I did utilize this in here or not, but we shall have a look. So yeah, if we just dive in, I mean, it's pretty simple. So we have like this intro guitar pass, then the kind of verses, left and right, uh, the pre-choruses, and then the chorus. Um, and then we've got this whole bridge section here and here. So we'll, we'll, we'll dive in and we'll see what's going on. Uh, but the intro is very simple. I think it's just a pretty standard clean tone and it sounds like this. <laughs> So yeah, it's a little bit gritty, um, and again, this is to kind of meld with, uh, there's like a little bit of a synth intro, and I think we kind of blended the two together to kind of, again, similar with the bass, like kind of kind of make them sound like they were almost one sound, and just allow that to drive on, and that's just dead center um, to allow the mix to kind of widen open when the verse comes in a little bit. So together with the little synth bit, it sounds like this. <laughs> And then as it 
it gets into the verse there, you can see where it opens up and we go left and right. Um, I didn't use that DI, so I don't know why it's still there. I take a DI for everything, um, uh, just in case I need to reamp anything or if I want to use the DI for anything else, but typically I don't use them, so the tracks just get removed when I come to mixing it. This one, obviously not the case, but that's why that's there, so we'll ignore that. Um, so yeah, that is, as I say, 57 and a 421 uh, on a Hampstead amp. And it doesn't sound like we ran anything. I think we just turned the gain up a little bit on the amp to get it to like break up that little bit. Yeah, and then in terms of processing, it's just an EQ uh, rolling off a load of low end here that I don't use. Um, and then dipping out some kind of mid frequencies, boosting a little bit, uh, so like low mids, boosting a little bit of mids, taking out something that was ringing there and then getting rid of all the high end stuff. So if I take it off and play it to you, We'll hear what it sounds like without it. Now let me just get rid of that synth as well. So yeah. And then I can punch it in. So really it was just kind of trying to condense it down, tighten up a little bit, get rid of some of the hairiness of it and the wooliness. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much what this is doing. So yeah, you can kind of hear that's all that sort of like build up in the low mids. Kind of a bit of the pick attack in that area there, which I've obviously tried to pull out a little bit more. And then I'm imagining this was probably something resonant that I didn't really want. Yeah, so you can hear from that little brief bit, I'll play it again. There's just a nasty frequency there. If I boost it, you'll hear. So yeah, I've got rid of that. And then as you can see, I mean, there's very little in this frequency range. It's just super, super high end stuff. So I've just rolled that off. And then again, with the lows, there's just noise that I don't really want in there. Just like the super, super subby part of the guitar that's kind of not really doing anything sonically, but just taking up space. Uh, so yeah, then it opens up and we have the same pass uh, through here, but we just did it left and right. So again, same setup, same amp, same guitar. Uh, we've got the 41 and the 57, 41 and the 57. So it's just double tracked either side. And that sounds like this. So again, this is uh, just going straight into the, the overall bus. So all of his guitars run into this bus here, um, and they're just very lightly processed. So we've got a bit more EQ here again, just notching out a few bits. There's clearly something ringing here. I think that's probably in the slightly more gritty part in the choruses. And again, just resonant frequencies and overall kind of harshness, and then just getting rid of some of that like muddy low mid that I didn't want. And again, just doubling down on getting rid of that low stuff there. So uh, usually what I do is similar with the drums and bass and stuff like, each kind of guitar part will get panned, uh, will get bussed to its own little channel, and then that channel goes to the ultimate kind of guitar bus or bass bus or whatever it is I'm working on. But in this instance, I didn't feel like this needed anything additional, so I've just leveled it, panned it, and then that gets bussed to the guitar bus here. Whereas the intro, I obviously wanted to do its own little bit of pre EQ on it before it hits this one, so that's why that's going there. And you'll see that throughout the guitars, some of them will just go straight to the bus and some of them will go to their own independent bus. Um, so yeah, so that is it. I mean, it literally has just these two bus bits of EQ on it here, which we have, as I showed you there. And then there's an instance of some compression here as well. That And that's really just to kind of ground it, get rid of any of the pokey little bits that I don't particularly want. And again, like I said in the last episode, if the presets that come with these plugins work for you, then just use them. I think I will have tweaked this a little bit. Uh, probably just the release and the attack will be tweaked on this just to kind of sit it a bit more with this particular pass um, but yeah otherwise this focus right one I love I think it sounds great so yeah it's just that EQ and compression uh, so I'll play it without those and then with them again so this is uh, the pass without them and then if I punch them in So it's an increase in volume, but it's also just tightening down on everything. And uh, the EQ is just helping kind of lose all of the wooliness and the stuff that I don't particularly want in any particular like pokey frequencies that are just coming out. And again, I mean, if I show you it, 
it's it's very simple it's you know they're not huge there's nothing really more i mean this is a clearly just a ring in frequency as i say i think it's in the kind of distorted pass um but yeah i mean it's you know no more than 3 db at any point of just getting rid of some areas that i didn't particularly want um so yeah so that's that it's real simple um so that's his uh verse um and then we've got the pre-chorus which is just this cool little stabby part that goes like a uh, call and response with the bass i think so if i just punch this in as well oh, okay so he's keeping it with the bass and then i think maybe jim or eden does the alternate Yeah, so Eden's got the call and response. Alex, again, like I said, matching the bass, trying to keep it all as one thing there. So that's what's going on there. Uh, and I have affected this. So let's see what we've got going on here. Yeah, okay, so I wanted this to be kind of tighter sounding and kind of smaller sounding. So it was a bit more like pokey and kind of lifted up the speakers a little bit more. So. And I believe, I don't know for certain, so the processing is similar. I'm still using this, uh, the electric rhythm guitar preset again, sorting out that attack and release, just making sure it sits nicely. Super fast attack, super fast release, uh, just to really clamp down on it and kind of gives it a bit more energy in that area. And then EQ wise, let's see what's going on here. Yeah, so it's just that super like dumpy low mid area that I didn't want. So I've just scooped that out. We've got a 4 dB gain reduction there, just kind of across that whole area um, and then this was clearly just a pokey frequency that I didn't like so let's just see what it's doing yeah. so that would have just been like a real whistly frequency that I heard and didn't like and I just wanted to get rid of it and it was kind of distracting and just getting getting in the way so we've scooped that out as well um, and then I believe that this was probably going through uh, this ray gun effect uh, echo head tape echo simulator which I love um, if you don't know ray gun effects there's a dude called Steve that makes pedals in the UK I think he just does it out of like a shed in his garden or something but I have a bunch of them this one is great it has a bunch of cool little settings on it and you've got like a filter on the side and you can add or get rid of like the tape warble and stuff and um, it's just really cool. It's a really cool, really cool pedal. So I think that's what's running through here on just like a slap. And it sounds great. Um, so yeah, that's what's going on there. And then chorus wise, So yeah, again, same setup, same amp. Everything that he's done was on the same amp, same guitar, same everything. Um, we want to keep, keep the continuity running through the entire thing. So really all that changed was just any, any pedal processing prior to it. Uh, so in this instance, I would imagine it's probably another Raygun pedal, which I have here, which I'll show you. So again, another Raygun pedal. I have a feeling it's probably this Soda Drive. It sounds like it's the Soda Drive. Um, it's just a really cool like drive pedal. Uh, everything he makes is analog. There's no digital stuff, so it's all like real. Let's call it. Um, but yeah, this is great. Uh, kind of like a blues driver style, but a bit more kind of less contained. It doesn't quite have that digital kind of compression that you get from the chips. Um, but yeah, I love it. It gets used on everything. Really great on like Fenders, uh, especially the kind of more pokey sounding fenders like if you're using the kind of pokier stuff on a, a strat or a telly really nice pedal um so yeah that i think is what i used here and again as you can see this is just running straight into the output here so it's just having this affected stuff and uh yeah and it's just leveled to kind of fit in with everything else and and that's kind of that so Okay, yeah, cool. So then this bit that I've labeled as bridge because I'm an idiot is actually the chorus. Uh, so I, get, I imagine it's probably very similar in tone. It's probably just slightly louder and it might be slightly more distorted. Let's see. Okay, cool. So I'm doing something cool here. Um, 
So we've got, again, an EQ just pulling out all the nonsense that I didn't want and all the harshness that I didn't want. Again, we're just getting rid of that tubbiness in the kind of low mids, just helping it sit kind of better. This is also to help it blend with the bass a little bit more. You know, your bass kind of starts kicking in around here. So this is just taking out that like mud that I didn't really want before that. It's around 200, 230 hertz. Um, and then again, this will all just be like resonant pinchiness that I didn't like. So... Yep. A real scratchy bit. Real, real scratchy. So yeah, that's just getting rid of all of that. So if I play it without it, and then with it. So that's it with no EQ. And that's it with the EQ. So it just helps it like smooth it down, sit it right where it needs to be. And then this is going through an 1176 with a super fast release and uh, a kind of medium attack and again this is just to add some energy it's just a super low ratio probably not doing an awful lot yeah minus two to three db of game reduction not a lot uh, and then in order to make this kind of wider and really bring the chorus in and like make the chorus kind of explode a bit more i have then subsequently sent this to an auxiliary bus here which i am saturating pretty heavily by the looks of things yeah fairly heavily full mix um boosting the highs quite a bit sorry cutting the highs quite a bit cutting the overall tone so i'm pushing it much more towards the kind of lo-fi sound again and then i am throwing that straight into this like monster monster 3d kind of like push the width out as far as you can and then i'd imagine yeah boosting the high ends in that area and then kind of boosting the thickness in the kind of sort of mids low mids there a bit now, like, that might seem weird because I cut quite a lot from that area, um, but it's basically just helping me kind of, like, accentuate some of the darkness that's inside the harmonics that come from the Decapitator plugin. So from here, as you see, like, I rolled it down so it's kind of more towards the darker tone. This has then added a few more kind of harmonics within that area that are helping thicken it up. And then again, it's just blended very lightly in here. So what I'll do is I'll play this chorus without this, and then I'll push it in as well so you can hear it. So... This is the guitar without that processing. Uh, just the guitar with the compression. So as you can see, it kind of brightens up on the sides and it pushes a little bit more energy out on the low end to the sides as well there. So this is it all together. And that's it without it. It kind of closes in on itself and you don't really hear it so So yeah, super simple. Um, and then that is all of Alex's guitars. So if I play all of Alex's stuff with the bass and drums, I'll give you kind of a bit of everything so you can kind of hear what's going on here. And you can see where the track is starting to build itself up here. So let me just get all that sorted. Cool, so yeah. just hear that chorus kind of widen out and that is purely down to the fact that I added this in as well so if I play it without it and then I'll punch it in you'll hear it so it kind of sounds fine without it but it's just not quite got the energy that I was looking for so that's yeah that's why I've done it I've just chucked that energy back in with that bus send and uh, and yeah, and then that's his guitars completed. So yeah, you can, as you can hear, the idea is that they're supposed to kind of match up with the bass and, and just kind of become like one thing. So that's what we have going on there. Uh, right, and then if we move on to Jamie's guitars, again, very similar kind of setup. Um, Jamie is principally like all the lead stuff, all the kind of whittly stuff. This one's a bit funny for me because he not normally plays a, uh, plays chords in the chorus which is kind of kind of different for jamie um so his chords are basically harmony parts of what alex is doing uh, just to kind of really bolster up that like that kind of eighth note rhythm that's just like driving with the kick and the bass the whole way through and again with alex's kind of strumming part 
we just wanted the chorus to come in and like slap you in the face and just drive you all the way to the next verse and keep the song rolling. So Jamie's uh, Jamie's parts are kind of sporadic in this, but um, we will get into it and we will show you what we're working with. So again, set up, again, very, very similar. Um, he was using a Fender, I'm gonna get this wrong and he's gonna hate me, and I think it was a Blues Junior, a uh, little combo that we just had out in the live room and again, had all of his pedals in here, had him in here, sent all the signal out there and it was just, again, a 421 and a 57, like I said, I, for me, it's it's just what makes the guitar sound like it should to my ears. Um, I've experimented with other stuff. I've used a, a Bayer Dynamic 201 as my condenser in place of, um, not condenser, dynamic in place of the 57 and I've used uh, some large cap condensers to replace other mics and I've added other mics in and I just kind of always come back to the same place which is the 57 and the 421 it just kind of works for me um, they I have a vintage 421 which I, I have two vintage 421s the white ones and one has some characteristics that I prefer for guitar so I just have a little mark on it so that I know which one it is um, and I've also used it so many times that I know where the phase alignment is on the grill with the 57 it's not just like right up at the front, you have to kind of move it back an inch. So I've basically there's a bit of electrical tape around it that allows you to stick the 57 exactly where it needs to be. So that is kind of just ready to go whenever and you know that you're always in phase when you're tracking and everything's good. Uh, so yeah, again, the one thing I should mention on this is what we tried to do and what we're, with this band, what we've done a lot in the past is like, tried to get bigger and bigger and bigger sounding kind of dynamic sections through just like layering guitars and adding more stuff. And I think over the course of making records with these guys, like what I found is that actually kind of st stripping stuff away, uh, which almost for me has always seemed counterintuitive, has actually allowed me to make the bigger parts way more dynamic because you can start to you're not battling with frequencies in like, you know, 10 guitar parts on the left and 10 guitar parts on the right. You've just got like, you just focus on one really great tone on the left and one really great tone on the right. And then everything just kind of allows that to like really blossom um, and bloom and kind of, and sing in its own space. So that's been a learning curve for me. Um, I think it's been a learning curve for those guys as well. It means that when they come to write it, everything is just much more condensed. You know, they don't just have like part on part on part on part that kind of like do sound great together when they're isolated. But when you start trying to mix it into a track, it becomes a bit, a bit nonsensical um, and a bit kind of counterintuitive in itself. You know, like you end up trying to fit these things into a frequency spectrum that doesn't really allow that much to be in there. And so you just start losing the point of those parts entirely. Um, so yeah, Jamie set up, Blues Junior, uh, 57 and the 421, and he played mostly on this record. He switched out a couple of times for things, but mostly he played this uh, Fender Strat, I want to say like modern player series or something, but I'm probably wrong again and he'll probably hate me for it. But it's bright pink. There's a photo of it here. You Fender nerds can tell me what that is. Um, and it sounds amazing and he is an absolute shredder. So let's see what we've got going on here. So yeah, I think we, we double tracked this like little riff in the intro and then basically in doing so, what we ended up doing was, again, like I just said, we just kind of, masked Eden's part which we'll get to in a second so I ended up just not using it at all in stereo so it's just Jamie on the left and Eden on the right and the part is this <laughs> and then it just repeats again and then with Eden's part it sounds like this So yeah, they just jump in and they both do the same thing for three times round before the rest of the track comes in. So that is that first verse in terms of guitars is super, super simple. Um, if I just punch in Alex's as well, you'll kind of hear it all together. So it goes like this. So yeah, super easy. Um, and then processing wise, again, you'll notice that quite a lot of the guitar EQs on this are very similar. Um, it was it, 
all the curves are essentially me just trying to tidy up the low end to allow the base to really like bolster that position that it's holding. So there's an awful lot of scooping out here for the subs and the, and the nonsense. But I mean, to be honest, in a guitar, there's very little going on here anyway when you've mic'd it up. Uh, and again, it's always this kind of like between 200 and 300 hertz that's just like where all of the kind of density and mud of like guitar amps sit. Um, so that's always got a fairly hefty scoop. And then again, here is essentially for me where all the like real pokiness and brightness of quite a lot of these kind of jangly guitar sits and especially with a lot of these amps that we're using they're super bright in the top end they have really beautiful cleans but they they can become a bit too much so again here and the processing again is the same so as i said like each individual part will probably most likely go into its own bus have a bit of processing before it goes to an overall bus in this instance jim's didn't get any processing additionally on the main bus so it looks like i've probably done buses for each individual part and then some maybe that didn't need anything at all as i was happy with them so this is this pass here on these little licks that he's doing <laughs> So yeah, as you can see, there's a huge buildup in that low end there, just from the graph. So if I play it again. It's just that real like low resonant mid that we didn't want. So that's been dipped out a lot. And then again, this will just be some harshness and brightness that I didn't want too much of either. Yeah. It's just kind of where that like horrible grittiness is. So if I play it without, you'll hear it. In fact, let me get rid of all the processing. So that's a guitar on its own, as you can hear, there's quite a lot of low end buildup. Uh, so that is then cleaned up with the EQ. Uh, I then ran a bit of satin on it. And again, a bunch of mid stuff here uh, and some high stuff, uh, super subtle kind of saturation, but it just adds a bit more bite to it to help it kind of sit just above where Alex's guitar is sitting and then match Eden's, which when we tracked was quite quite heavy in terms of like the actual distortion so just to kind of level all those things out and give them the all you know they're, they're kind of nothing is hiding underneath everything else so that's why this is going on here so it's kind of just that like nice kind of warm saturation if i get rid of it you can just kind of hear it bring up that that sort of like the kind of warmth and sort of roundedness of that overall tone and that's just again just to help it sit in line with everybody else's parts there uh, and then this is just running into this a very similar kind of compression slightly like well pretty much straight down the middle on the attack um, and then a, a slightly lower uh, ratio on this one and then the super fast release and then like a little tiny bit of makeup gain and that's about it um, and it's probably not doing that much in terms of gain reduction but it is driving quite a lot of energy through the guitar yeah, 5 db again reduction fair amount um so yeah so that's that guitar and then again that same eq move will primarily be used through quite a lot of this so if we jump into this kind of verse section here and it looks like i did nothing with this so yeah again that is just that tone and that will be this bus to oh okay so this is going into the same yeah okay so that's getting this, the exact same processing uh, as that initial lick so that's which bus it's heading to there uh, so you've seen all of that and again so you'll know what it's kind of doing I imagine that this will have been the exact same pedal sequence plus maybe a little bit extra reverb for the kind of ethereal nature of this part <laughs> So yeah, simple. And then that's just pan dead central. And again, this will be, yeah. So this is where we have the call and response echo. So we've got Alex and uh, Alex on lead, uh, Alex on rhythm and bass are doing the same part. So I've got Alex on the left, bass straight down the middle, and then Eden is doing the echo. So that's on the right hand side. So the idea being here is that Jim's part comes up the middle. So you kind of have this like overall sort of 180 view, this full like stereo spectrum of everything. And then there's a bunch of like, kind of long drawn out vocal notes here. So the whole point is that it's supposed to be this kind of like wash of sound over you. So that's what's happening there. Um, and then where are we here? Yeah, so 
but this is like where the pre-chorus really kicks in here um, and it's the most kind of saturated part for Jim in this entire song uh, Eden and Jamie both play a similar part and they're kind of harmonised and, and kind of in their own space so if I play them to you to the right you've got Jamie straight down the middle Jamie's just supposed to be like the real forefront of that and just to kind of lift that pre-chorus with all the, the additional kind of vocal harmonies and stuff that are going on there and really drive it I guess it's like the most like stadium rock part and that was kind of the idea we went for this big reverb kind of overdriven stack sort of sound and then Eden is just sliding in underneath just to give it that harmony give it a bit more kind of like harmonic depth and uh, so he's slightly off to the right to give it its own space while still focusing on what Jim is doing uh, and then I have got, again, the compression and the EQ, nothing wild. Very, yeah, the same uh, as the the last bus. And then the EQ boosting a bunch of high end here and, again, removing all that low nonsense. So if I get rid of the EQ and play it to you. So that's no EQ. And then if I punch the EQ back in. Again, just tightening up that low space, cleaning it all up, and then just pushing a bit more of that top end energy through, uh, just to kind of really drive that point home. Um, and again, probably getting about five dB of gain reduction on this, I'd imagine. Yeah, two three, two Super simple. And then this is being bust over to this reverb send, which is doing most of the heavy lifting here. He says. So, I'll just put this in here so we can hear it isolated. So yeah, there's quite a lot going on there for this tone. Uh, we've got some Echo Boy, just giving it some delay and a little bit of width. Uh, we then have this slate lustrous plate. Um, this plate for me is kind of the, the softest sounding. It's got the least amount of kind of like tinny top end. Um, so this is the one that I typically use. And I have set the equalization in it just to match what I wanted it to match and give it some frequencies kind of responses there. So I've got a, um, I've left all of this. I've reduced the, the low cut altogether. The low band is kind of left the same. And then I've basically set the shelf at like 5.8K and pushed it by 3.5 dB. So that is essentially where I'm getting most of the kind of reverb, uh, like energy. Um, and then again, pretty. I've boosted the level, it's 100% wet and I've boosted the level just to really push that through. Uh, and then I will have EQ'd this again, get rid of all that low kind of nonsense that I don't want, get rid of all the super, super low stuff because you definitely don't need that in a reverb send for this instance. Um, and then, yeah, this is set to the memory setting, the like memory boy emulation setting, which for me, the like the chorusing effect and the kind of modulation that it has on it really like lend itself to this. Um, so that's why I've used it and it's just on a quarter note delay and uh, this again I wanted it's not set to full it's set to halfway so that I still have some of the raw guitar going into the reverb so you kind of get the full extent of the guitar without it just reverbing the delay send if that makes sense so that's what's going on there so that's only halfway so you're getting some echo some of the, the straight send and then the straight send is obviously meaning that the reverb is all the guitar as well as reverbing the, the echo as well just to kind of give it a bit more of a wide space so that is what's happening there so if I put it in context with the song and then that tail is just allowing that little four beat count to kind of fill that space where we didn't just want a dead stop, we wanted a nice kind of reverb tail going in before the chorus. So that is helping match up with the little bend that Eden is doing in that section as well, which I believe. It's 
So together they sound like this. <laughs> So yeah, they just kind of nicely decay out and allow the chorus to really come in with this huge impact. And then chorus for Jamie, super simple. Again, nothing crazy, some EQ and probably, yeah. So I've got some saturation on here, a little bit of EQ boost and some compression with the 1176. Uh, and then also just throwing. So this is my kind of broad EQ. This is just making sure I can get rid of all the stuff that I didn't really want. So... I find it. So again, 3 dB of gain reduction, not a huge amount, super simple. It's on a, the slowest attack setting just to allow the kind of strums to come through and the fastest release so that it's not just like turning it into a big block so it still has some movement in the dynamics. Uh, and then I'm throwing it into this uh, New York style saturation with the push setting put in just so that it really like helps just break up on those harder hits in the top end uh, adding a little bit of about four yeah 5k here and then uh, nothing else really going on there um, just I quite liked this the way this 5k sits with this guitar frequency and then again scooping out that low stuff getting rid of the super subby stuff and then again just making sure that it's not pinching over the top so if I turn all of these off you'll be able to hear it <laughs> and it's all gone so yeah that's just that to smooth it out and then this one just scooping up that super super low stuff that we just don't really want that's just kind of eating up space uh, so that is yeah pretty basic EQ going on there um, and then this will be doing a fair amount so so it's just biting up that top end that a little bit more. And giving it a little bit more depth to the bottom of it. It's subtle, but it just helps up really sit in, uh, in place with what Alex is doing. And the two of them together sound like this. So the EQ is just helping that kind of like just push over the top of Alex's stuff. Obviously Alex has got a much more gritty sounding guitar and Jim's is almost entirely clean apart from that super top end, like just the little crispness on the top end. Uh, and the 5K boost is just helping it just push over the top of Alex's. So you kind of get this like, this kind of blending of the guitars that almost just sounds like one guitar, but you, but you know there's more than one there because it's not humanly possible to play all of those notes on one guitar at the same time. So... Uh, so yeah, that's what's happening there. And then, aside from that, it's literally just these little bits here that he plays, which is a bend into the second verse and then a little harmony bend as well. So that sounds like this. So yeah, that's it. I mean, it's super, super simple, super subtle. And again, just another EQ boosting a bunch more in the kind of 2 to 3k here, scooping out loads more in that low end, and I've scooped out even more of the like super, super sub stuff, uh, just to really help it poke out over the top. And there's, yeah, first one's just a little throw off to the left, and the, se the second one is dead central, and then that riff here comes in with Alex's verse part as well. So yeah, and then again, yeah, it's just that super, super simple EQ and a really, really simple bit of uh, compression on that, doing not a whole amount, and then that's pretty much it for Jim. You have the same kind of big ethereal, like, stadium rock bit come back in, chorus, same again, and then this is just the, the second verse lick that he does, which is very similar to the first. It's just extended and repeated and repeated and then harmonizes, so the processing is exactly the same. <laughs> So yeah, that's 
Jim's guitar. Super, super simple. So if I play you a bit of that in context with everything else, you can see where we've got to with the track so far. So let's see, let's go from this first point. starting to become a bit more of a track uh, and then yeah we just move on to Eden stuff uh, again exactly the same um, same microphone choices different amp different guitar uh, Eden was playing uh, also a uh, also a strap um, just an American standard strap uh, I think it was one of the ones that he grabbed from the shop whilst he was here, actually. Um, which, if you don't know, I've done a couple of videos on my Instagram and stuff, but essentially the studio is attached to uh, the largest music store in the East Midlands in, in the UK. Uh, we have about 350 guitars, well, electric guitars, and then about 250 acoustics in stock, so the, my clients can just jump in there and grab stuff off the wall and bring it back in if they feel like they want to use that guitar over anything else. And I think actually the entire setup that we used for Eden was stuff that is available in that shop. So we used a, uh, it's a Supro Princess, I think it's called or something like, or like Blue Royal Princess or something. I can't remember, but I'll put a picture of it here so you can see it. Um, very similar in kind of functionality to Alex's Hampstead. Um, except for the fact that it it's clean the whole way through. It doesn't, it's not like, there's no, basically if you push the gain, it doesn't, it just gets louder. It doesn't get any, any like grittier or anything like that. Um, so we were using that with the Fender Strat. And again, 57 and a 421, um, super simple setup. Eden in here with a couple of pedals on the floor. Uh, not an awful lot, actually. Again, I think we used a bunch of this guy, the soda drive um, and I think for his slightly like more gainy tones it will have been he has I can't for the life of me remember what it is uh, I will text him shortly and I will put a photo of the pedal that he uses for his kind of high gain stuff here I can't remember what it is but that's what we use primarily for his high gains on this record and it sounded great so as you heard earlier uh one of those high gains is this part. Which is his kind of intro into the verse, which has, as you heard with Jamie's part. Real simple. Uh, again, 41 and 57. And again, very similar processing. Scooping out loads of the low end here and then a bump here. Uh, and just to tidy up any sort of low end kind of muffly stuff that was going on there, there will have been something there. So let's have a quick listen to what was going on there. Uh, this is without the EQ. Yeah, so it's kind of just like some knockiness that I didn't particularly want. And then I've just boosted that kind of two and a half to 3k just to really accentuate the kind of brightness of that that whole pass uh, and then that stays the same all the way throughout his stabs in the pre-choruses um, and that will come back again here yeah so for the second pre-chorus those stabs come back in again here and then it goes into a rolling that is where his kind of harmony of that big kind of stadium lead line come in so there so yeah again so it's just super simple compression super simple eq nothing crazy just good playing good tones in the amp and uh and that was kind of that and then we have here yeah so his second verse oh my bad oh. 
Yeah, so I think originally what happened here was that we had, um, we initially had nothing kind of in this verse apart from his harmony part with uh, Eden's little lick into it. So, uh, sorry, Jim's little lick into it, which is the, the part that I put here. Sounds like this. <laughs> So, Eden's doing a harmony of Jim's part. Jim is also doing a harmony of Jim's part. So, Jim's harmony comes in dead down the center. Eden's harmony comes in on the right. And Jamie's original pass is on the left. So, yeah, you're getting, again, that kind of, like, over arc of all of that just to give everything its space in the stereo width. So, for this second verse, Eden then didn't have... We didn't have anything written. Wasn't necessarily going to have anything written. And I decided that at some point it might make sense to have... Eden just kind of chugging the root notes along with the bass just to kind of really bolster that part down and uh, we chucked it in and it sounded pretty much like exactly what we wanted it to sound like which was non kind of non offensive and non like overbearing it was just there <laughs> Just plays the same note the whole way through. Before he comes back in with the stabs in the chorus. So if I put it in the verse. So yeah, and it's subtle, but it really helps like just drive that verse on when the beat comes back in with everything else. Uh, and again, very little going on. It's just going, it's just, I think it's just as is, in fact. I don't think we put anything else through it. So unless it's going into the same bus as the big lick, let me have a look real quick. Oh, okay, so yeah, it's going into that same, that same stab, stab bus as everything else. Um, where is it going? Oh, no, it's not. So yeah, that's that's just as as is, going straight to the output. So, yeah. And again, I can't remember what it is, but that sounds like it could be one of the like bright settings that I have on this pedal, uh, just running straight into his amp. It could also be one of his pedals, I can't remember. But yeah, we just went for a super kind of like pinchy, tight, nothing crazy, not overly saturated, but just kind of like driving part, like tone, so that we could just bang it on that and we could just literally hide it off in on the right-hand side, but it was just allowing that whole thing to kind of drive through and extend that that kind of stereo width so that's all that is doing there uh, and then we move on to his harmony part here and that is his I, it will be the pedal that I mentioned earlier and I put on the screen that is what that is I can't remember what it is so Hopefully I found that image and I put it up earlier. Otherwise I'm going to look a bit of an idiot. Um, and then he runs uh, a the Behringer digital delay, um, which is, you know, everybody says is rubbish, but it sounded great. We used it. It has tap tempo. It was ideal. So, yeah, that's that. And then he has um, the pedal is called an Immerse, I think. I will, again put a photo on the screen of that reverb pedal so that is a blend of whatever the distortion pedal is again in fact i'll just put a chain here this is the setup for this tone cool uh and it sounds like this which very nicely complements the part that it was supposed to Those two parts weren't supposed to be like some hair metal kind of like big rock thing. That was just, it, it was what it was. Um, it wanted to just kind of bolster that part and just gonna give it some harmony. And yeah, that's what we went for. And then processing wise, very similar again as every other guitar, EQ, compression. And then on this, there will be some, yeah, some saturation. So a bunch of mid-range saturation here and some top end saturation there as well, just to really help it kind of level out with the, the high gain of what was going on with Jamie's stuff. So if I get rid of it and play it. It's there, but it's kind of
kind of, you know, it's a bit too subtle, so I just added the saturation. <laughs> Bring it up into the foreground, match it with the gain that's going on on Jamie's part, and kind of allows it to hold its own position while still really just marrying together with that and not being like overly irritating in in either ear or anywhere in the mix. So that was what was going on there. And then again here, just reducing a real pinchiness in that kind of high mid and getting rid of all the lumpiness in the low mid, uh, and then just yeah, getting rid of all of the kind of nonsense and whistle that's in the top end and all the sub that is non-existent in the bottom end just eating up headroom so yeah that is all that's happening there and then we have eden's kind of main part um which is the the chorus riff which if i just play with everything it sounds like this and it just repeats that the whole way through the choruses so it's one of my favorite riffs on the record in fact, Eden holds my two favourite parts on the record, which is this part and then in another song called Extension of Us. There, in the first verse of that song, he had nothing written and we knew we wanted something there. And he basically had this thing in his head where he was like, oh, what if I just do something like this? And I hit record and he just freestyled this thing with some effects on and all of us were like, yeah. And that was it. We did the one pass of it and now it's on the record and it sounds incredible it's this really like beautiful kind of sliding lyrical sort of like leady part that just sits really beautifully with the vocals in that section and it i think just the whole thing about the fact that there was nothing there originally and then it was there was just like made it my favorite part so uh fair play eden uh, two favorite parts on the record so the chorus riff um is super super simple it was the same kind of basic like saturation tone that we had with the uh um the kind of stab stuff in the in the verses and then it was just single tracked um and originally i kind of thought oh i can stick it like bang in the middle of the mix and it will just kind of hold its own and have its place and sound awesome and everyone will love it and then when all the vocals went on that very quickly it just sort of disappeared in the mix and, and wasn't really there because obviously you've got this soaring lead vocal and all these harmonies that pile in right at the beginning of the chorus. Um, so when it came to mix it, I did something I've done on a few records and it kind of worked really nicely on this, which is basically I, I pushed it to the right-hand side, the, the source material. Um, so I'll show you what I mean. Uh, so if I get rid of this, this is what it sounded like before I kind of did this like trick. So it's just a 16th note, really quick slapback delay. Um, and again, just so you know, processing wise, just bumped the kind of like the, the key sort of brightness of it just to help it really like poke through over the top of everything. Again, massive scoop in the low mids and removed everything else below it. Uh, so yeah, super, super simple EQ, compressor, and a tiny, tiny bit of uh, reverb here as well. So the compressor is kind of the same as, same settings as pretty much everything else I've used. It's really just to kind of like bolster and like tighten it down and just kind of give it its own like locked in position in the mix um, and just get rid of any like extraneous kind of nonsense that I didn't really want or any like weird like sudden bursts of dynamic flair. And then reverb wise, uh, I absolutely love this t sarb 1R from Softube, um, especially on guitars. I think it sounds awesome. The mix is set super, super, super low, uh, but it just gives it a bit of space. So if I play it without it, you'll hear it. It without it, and that's it with it. So it's just like a, a kind of small to medium sized room reverb, and it just kind of allows like a little bit of depth in that part. Um, so yeah, that's what's happening there. And then, in order to kind of give it a bit more of an overarching thing, I then sent it to its own bus here. So it's a mono bus, so it gets sent to that, and then that mono bus gets panned to the opposite side. So in this instance, these guys are being panned 35% to the right, and then the mono bus that it's kind of being bussed to is going 40% to the left, and then I've put a slap back on that. So you get like a kind of echo of the guitar going left and right, and it sounds like this. So 
turn it off. Essentially, it just helps me like widen the mix by sending his guitar left and right, but without just sending the exact same signal. It kind of gives it a bit more interest and a bit more movement between the left and right, and it just really helps like widen up that whole mix point. And uh, and yeah, that's it. I mean, there's there's nothing else going on with that. Um, it's just the tone with a little bit of reverb, a slight bit of EQ, and then that little echo that goes off to the other side. So if I play. All of the that's that's it for Eden's guitar. So yeah, nothing nothing wild. So if I play everything uh, together, I'll just dump that chorus in as well, so you can hear it. Um, and it sounds like this. So yeah, that is all the guitars, uh, and then if we just jump into, I realise I kind of neglected this percussion, and it's kind of important for the chorus. So we'll just do a quick jump in on that. It's it's super super simple. I mean, I used, I think it's a shaker, a cabasa, and then the tambourines, and the tambourines really add the drive in the chorus. So if I put I'll put them in so you can hear them. <laughs> tambourine um but i have processed it I, th I think yeah so yeah uh, let's have a look here i'll just solo this out okay so that's the tambourine before i processed it, it just sounds like a tambourine in a room in front of a microphone i then have um, compression uh, just to really like kind of try and it for tambourine in a chorus when I'm doing like 16ths and stuff like it's obvious that it has the accents and it's kind of important that it has that because it matches up with the snare drum but ultimately what I'm trying to do is just create like a blanket kind of high frequency like tick -a -tick -a -tick -a without that still has a bit of movement so you have the like dynamic of it hitting rather than it just being like a straight uh, straight 16th notes um, but I'm, I'm kind of trying to just really like bring the dynamic drop between the the, the uh, accent and the rest of the um, the rest of the notes slightly lower down so it's got a, a kind of harsh amount of compression on it um, so if I turn it on You can see that it's on the accent. It's just bringing it down by three dB, and that's me just trying to like pull the lower, the lower velocities and the, and the and the higher ones all together a little bit more. Uh, so yeah, it's got a slow attack to allow the the accent through, uh, and a super fast release to just kind of get rid of it again. So I'm really just trying to clamp down on that accent, so it just kind of brings everything down together like that. But you still hear the accent, uh, and then I've added a bunch of saturation to it and it kind of just pulls out the sort of like low end frequency of the tambourine which sounds ridiculous because it's all nearly all high end frequency but I'll take it out so you can kind of see it just adds like a bunch of life that kind of wasn't there prior to that into it um, and then again there's nothing in a tambourine in this area like nothing at all so just scooped out anything any potential room noise anything that was there kind of eating up headroom that's all gone um, this bit here is just a super 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 like attacky sound whistly kind of attacky that I didn't want so that's been got rid of and then again here got rid of some frequencies that I didn't particularly like so the kind of clacky sound it's a plastic tambourine the clack of the plastic and again just a part like a, a portion of the attack that I wasn't particularly keen on and then here just kind of giving it a little bit more brightness um, without it being too pinchy on your ears so that's what's happening there and then just to kind of fill it out even more and give it a bit more kind of like space I've put a super short room on it um, 
with the same reverb as I was using on that guitar pass I showed you shortly a second ago. Uh, it's got the dark setting on it rather than the bright one, again, just to kind of tame it and not allow it to just kind of really overtake. Tambourines are naturally one of the brightest things ever, so I don't want to add any more to that. Uh, so the reverb just sounds like this. And if I get rid of it, So really all it's doing is just slightly extending the overall sound of, of that reverb, the, the overall kind of length of each note and each hit without it being like an obvious reverb. It just kind of gives it a bit more space as if it was you were stood in a room with a guy playing it at the other end of the room. So that's what's going on there. Uh, it really just helps drive that chorus home. And then in the verses, I have a little shaker. Oh. Just a super, super simple shaker. Nothing going on there. It just goes straight out to the percussion bus, which just had a bit of EQ. Again, all this kind of high-end percussion, tambourine shakers, cabasas, have very little in the low frequency that you actually need, let alone want. So they're on the overall bus. They've just got rid of everything in the low end and then just boosted a little bit of the top end just to give it that little bit of shine and brilliance. So yeah, the shaker is just simply in the verses and it just carries the verse through a little bit more. So you've, he's he's playing eighth notes on the uh, on the hi hats, and I think originally he was doing sixteenths on the hi hats. And I told him to reduce them to eighth notes, and that we'd fill in the gap with the shaker, which is exactly what we did. So yeah, when they come in, they just come in like this. Oh no, that was it. That was exactly it. He was playing eighth notes, and I wanted to bolster up. He's doing. Uh, like a 16th note pattern in that area and then I think he goes back to 8th notes yeah, so it's it was 8th notes in the first part then when the 16th note comes back in I wanted to accentuate the 16th note so we put the shakers in on the 16th notes that's what's happening there so it sounds like this that's how we get to the bit. super wide stereo just to really like open that part up so that's all that's happening there it's absolutely super subtle nothing crazy i did nothing to that actual raw audio apart from that overall eq that's going across all the percussion uh and then this bit comes in in the pre-chorus when you have the little like alternating stabs and it's just a little real simple cabasa part that goes like this just does that the whole way through and in context, it sounds like this. And that's it. Uh, that was all the percussion for this song. Um, a pretty, in fact, I know exactly what happened with the percussion. We did everything and we ran out of time at the studio to do any percussion and I was going to take all my percussive stuff down to London when we did the vocals and I forgot because I'm an idiot so I came back up here and the guys gave me free reign to kind of just do whatever I wanted so I put in a bunch of the stuff here um, and then I sent them essentially just like monitor stamps of what I'd done so that they could say like yes that no that or can we move this around or whatever it might be and then I could just come in and and kind of snap it all up and, and make sure it was all in the right place. This one, I don't think we did an awful lot with. I think this is pretty much exactly as I sent it to them, and they were like, yeah, it sounds great. So that's that. Um, so yeah, that's guitars, percussion, bass, drums, all that done. So all we've got left is vocals. Uh, however, I'm going to split that into another episode. So if you want to watch that, click the link at the end of the video. I will also put it in the description box at some point as well. So yeah, see you in the next one.